say the fundamentalist preacher is now circling around and rambling incoherently to himself, pretending that there are people there listening to him, even though people are passing him by. He is getting angry for no reason, and seems to be shouting at the air. Let's get a closer look. This creature now seems to be pontificating about love and gold, as is common with this fundamentalist breed. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. You don't want to get too close, however. It may bite. Excuse me? I'm just wondering, what's your opinion on, like, uh, the Big Bang Theory and, like, the age of the universe? Uh, well, I'm not sure of the age of the universe. Um, and so the idea of the Big Bang, you know, I kind of reject that idea is to think that, uh, you know, either something came from nothing, pure nothing, not even space existed. That's not what the Big Bang Theory says, though. Well, then, if you, you have some sort of eternal matter that's cyclically expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting... It doesn't say that either, though. All right, then what exactly are you arguing for the Big Bang Theory? What I'm saying is, you know, the universe expanded from an extremely hot, dense state about 13.8 billion years ago. How did it get that uh, dense state? Don't know. Don't know. All right, so from the agnostic standpoint of don't know, I don't know the age of the universe. If you don't know how the Big Bang got underway, I don't know the age of the universe. So we're both agnostic at a certain place in our epistemology. All right, fine. So we're both agnostic at a certain element. So now as a Christian, uh, the difference between you and I is going to be this. I believe that there is a God who transcends creation who can speak to humanity. You think you're the result of a Big Bang. Mm, that's oversimplifying it. You can say it's oversimplifying it, but if everything started in the you know this dense, hot pocket in the universe, uh, what? How many billion? Four point six, something like that, billion years ago. Thirteen point eight. Thirteen point eight billion years ago. Now everything's uh, contracting out of that. Ex you're really just a expanding, result. not contracting. Expanding. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Expanding. So you're really just a result of that. You say it's an oversimplification, but the, you know the reality of it is, any more than I say God created the heavens and the earth and He governs all things, we can say oh, that's a simplification. That's kind of what I believe as well. So, you know, at the end of the day, you're really just that. So when it comes to, so my point would be this. When it comes to things like logic, I think the Big Bang destroys logic. Why? Well, what is logic? Is logic the result of the Big Bang? Uh, it's not really related. Um, so logic's not related. No, I mean, it's not. logic doesn't come into this conversation. Well, logic does come into this conversation. A can't be not A in the same way at the same time. Either the Big Bang happened or it didn't happen. A can't be not A in the same way at the same time. The issue is The this. universe is either 5,000, 6,000 years old, or the universe is 13.6 or 14.2, whatever you say it is. Thank you very much for giving me these delicious walnuts. I like them very much. You are a nice person. I will be sure to come back tomorrow to get some more walnuts. You are my favorite person in the neighborhood. I like you, like you, love you. So logic, the very nature of logic, Every time you and I go to speak, logic is at the cent center of our conversation. No, I think evidence would be at the center of the conversation well, because again, when you say the universe is only like five or six thousand years old, you're essentially contradicting what, like, for example, radiometric dating tells us. Uh, but again, when you say evidence, there's evidence and there's non evidence. Yo, a can't why, be non -A hold, and hold on a second. Why are you talking so loud? I'm right here, man. Well, I'm, I'm out here to preach. You came up to me. You're sitting over there. You came up to me. I'm out here to preach. I've been doing this for the last maybe 25 minutes. So, so let's just chill out for a second. Let's, well, let's no, have a one-on-one. -on -one. I came out here to do something very particular. If you want to interrupt me, you're welcome to ask me questions. But I'm going to continue to do what I came out here to do. And so I'm not, I'm not out here to be your servant. I'm not asking I'm you not to be my servant. I'm not out here to do what you tell me to do. Man, I'm not asking you to get on my knees and service me like Jesus, all right? All I'm, so, all I'm saying well, is... Well, you're about it. But see, that's the thing at the end of the day with you atheists. At the end of the How day... How do you know I'm an atheist? What's that? Uh, what makes you think I'm an atheist? Well, for starters, you have a little satanic symbol on your hat. It's a fucking hat, and, dude. And, and uh, by the way, today, this is going to be an F-bomb free zone. Really? Yeah. So... Right around here. <laughs>
clear. You want to talk about, you know, your right to free speech, but yeah, now you're fuck. saying we can't say That's fuck. That's free zone. I'm not allowed to well, say fuck? You know, you know, all the talk, like, hate free zones, gun free zones, this is going to be an F-bomb free so zone. So what happens if I say fuck? So we can have, we can have free speech, but see, hopefully we can be mature about it. 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 And what oh. we always find, especially with the atheists, more than any other group. What I hope, well, I hope you can teach me about like maturity, like you know, shouting to the air and like trying to get people's attention. That's really mature, man. I, I, I can have a real heart to heart to you on the, about this. Well, at the end of the day, a heart to heart. Again, you're just the result of blind processes and chance. So the idea of a heart to heart, again, on your grounds, is meaningless. With all due respect, what the fuck? Are you talking about? What the Here. fuck is he talking My about? What the fuck is he talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? So it goes back to the nature of logic. You say evidence, non evidence. See, logic is inescapable to our conversation. Let's just clarify something. What happens if I say fuck? Well, God will judge you. Yeah? see that you're disrespectful and it really out of the overflow of the heart speaks and usually when people are cussy it's because they lack intelligence oh they lack of things to say and i lack intelligence okay yeah. we interrupt this shit show to bring you a derivation of the schrodinger equation the most important equation in non-relativistic quantum physics i shouldn't be able to do this because as the fundamentalist preacher pointed out only stupid people curse we begin with maxwell's motherfucking equations in free space as there is no point charge, Gauss's goddamn laws for electric and magnetic fucking fields are set to zero, leaving only Faraday's fucking law of mutual motherfucking induction and Ampere's circuital law. Applying the stupid bitch-ass motherfucking curl operator to Faraday's law, and substituting in Ampere's law, and then utilizing this goddamn fucking identity, we end up with the general equation for light. Next, we'd plug this piece of shit into the general equation for plane waves, solve for the fuck-ass wave vector, and end up with these cock-sucking relationships. Combining the relativistic insights of my bro from another hoe, Einstein, the discovery of quantization by my fucking homeboy, Planck, and related equations from my nigga, Compton, we introduce these shit-dicking operators and modify our equation accordingly. The shit we end up with applies only to relativistic piss-ant particles, so we apply De Broglie's insights concerning cunt-fucking duality of classical particles and modify the equation to get a classical component. We can do this by applying the damn de Lambertian operator to our equation and making normalizable the fucking wave function, which we introduce as the shit stain solution to our titty smacking equation. We can now take this shit and rearrange it until it becomes the Klein goddamn Gordon equation. If we take the relativistic fucking limit, we'll get the damn Dirac equation. If we take the non-relativistic fucking limit, however, which we do by approximating this shit like this, we can solve the differential fucking equation until we get this. After that, we can cancel this shit because it becomes fucking negligible at non-relativistic scales. And that's how you derive the fucking Schrodinger equation. Usually when people are cussy, it's because they lack intelligence. Oh, uh, they lack of things to say. And I lack intelligence. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, that's usually cute. what happens when people are cussy. someone who's wise and someone who should be respectable so like you know if obama's on tv a guy like you might still respect him, but you know he would kind of go down to most people's minds he's giving a state of the union uh, speech he's just dropping f-bombs and things like that so well you strike me as a super wise man <laughs> well yeah because i fear god you're a very wise person fear the lord's the beginning of wisdom I mean, I know. What, what is, let me ask i know you, I, I know i see a wise person when he's shouting in the air let, let me ask randomly. you what is wisdom um I don't know, I don't have a dictionary on me. Alright, now, now see, this is sort of foolishness I have to deal with. You, you, uh, I perceive as a very wise man. What's a wise man? I don't know. Uh -oh. See, that's the problem with you atheists. See, and logic is at the heart of our conversation, because atheists are, at the end of the day, illogical. I you like how you generalize. You a very wise man, what's wisdom? I don't know. You, you perceive me as something, you don't even know what it is. So that's the fundamental problem we have with atheists like yourself out here. You pretend to your intelligence throughout things like evidence, then you don't even know when you use basic language. But the only uh, evidence that you came out with that I'm an atheist is that I have what you perceive as a satanic symbol on my head. 
Uh, the inverted cross is also used by Catholics to uh, glorify St. Peter. You're, you're whole, you're, well, I'm not a Catholic. Are you just going to ignore that part? Maybe I'm a Catholic for all you know. Uh, well, you don't have inverted cross. Well, uh, Catholics do have inverted crosses. Where do they have inverted crosses? Church did it, someone endured for the church. I'm just wondering, uh, do you ever like not play semantic word games? I mean, can we like just have a serious discussion without you know? How are we gonna have a serious discussion when you don't even know what certain words mean? See, at the end of the day, all of our words that's why I'm saying words are important, but that goes back to but logic. that's all you can do. All you can do is play with words and well, arrange them in a way. Oh, I'm not having a debate with you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm so just having a, a discussion. Even if you want to say, let's have a conversation, let's not have word games. But what are we having here other than we're discussing words, our use of language, how is language being used? And so when you don't even know the difference, we say, well, it's not about logic, it's about evidence. Well, lo and behold, let's have irrational, contradictory evidences and say, well, they're both true. I have evidence that means, uh, you know, what I said was that logic doesn't there come in. Evidence for that, I have evidence that well they contradict one another but lo and behold it's not about logic see and that's the fundamental prophecy as a christian we hold logic in high regard jesus christ the logos of god see as christians but logic isn't even relevant logic. to the issue of the big bang uh, the only things that are relevant are the yeah. lines of evidence that point to it not not you per se but hopefully you know we're at, we're at a uc system yes as a cal state school i expect a little more from you guys today Cal State, I know it's a little easier to get the Cal State system, the UC system. I'm expecting, I know it's not Harvard. I know it's not Harvard, but I am, you know, well, it's UC. It's you not know, UCLA. For someone UC. who doesn't have any so real have, academic achievements, you come off as very I patronizing. Have, uh, I am, uh, you know, kind of kind of hold you guys to this bar up here. Kind of a little higher than yesterday. You're a pretty patronizing guy. So when it comes to, for example, I the Big Bang happened or did. That's logic. A can't be not in the same way at the same time. So if we're going to discuss the Big Bang and these things, we need to bring logic into discussion. The reality is, is logic is a transcendental necessity to all of our What you're doing is you're taking a scientific issue and you're turning it into a philosophical one. Uh, that's that's well, something yeah, I'm not cool no, here, And here's what you're doing. You're taking a scientific issue and trying to extrapolate a philosophy out of it. The minute I'm not extrapolating any philosophy. I don't minute, want to talk about philosophy at all. I just want to talk about the, minute, the evidence for the Big Bang. But again, re realize this, students. When he says things, I don't want to talk about philosophy. What he wants to do is beg the question. When he says things like evidence, he's saying, well, here's, here's how we know the nature of reality, and here's how we prove our points is what evidence is. That's all philosophy. <laughs> the difference is you want to bake it into the numbers already. You want to say... Here, here's our common ground of what philosophy is, or what knowledge is. <laughs> Science is just knowledge. That's why you talk about conscience with knowledge. Well, Questions. if you're familiar with college campuses, you'll realize that there are separate departments for philosophy and science. You know, for, well, a, for well, a guy who claims to have understanding of these sort of things, I expect you to, you know, be a little at, at a higher level. Amen. And, and students, that's what I'm out here to do. So, here's what we have. Here we are at a university. Are we a universe or are we diverse? Are we a diversity or a universe? See, if we're at a university, what you're doing in your science classroom should align with what you're doing in your economics classrooms, should align with what you're doing in psychology classrooms, should align with your sociology and everything else. So when you say, well, we have different departments, I have to ask you guys, is there coherence from department to department? So what they tell you in your science class about yourself, is that the same thing they tell you about in your economics class, or are they contradictory and totally different? See, so They're non-overlapping magisteria so in most cases. So when you say we have well, different departments, again, we have to bring logic back to the issue. And so if your econ department can tell you truthful things, and that can contradict everything in your biology department, everything in your uh, chemistry department, physics and sociology and everything else, lo and behold, that's why many of you are relativists and become irrational in your thinking. <laughs> We expect the universe will be understood, to be coherent from class to class to class to class, and in our studies. Nowadays, the knowledge itself has to say, well, logic has nothing to do with it. Logic doesn't play into this particular issue. You know, when we have different departments for different things, whether they're coherent or not, Can I ask why you're so animated? Like, you Like, you're waving your arms all over the place. We don't know whether it's coherent or anything like that. But see, as Yo, Christians, can you answer my question? The world is coherent. I'm just, I just as don't understand like what this drama is all about. The heavens and the earth. He knows all things. He holds all things together. So the world is coherent. So when you go to econ, align with science, align with philosophy, align with psychology, sociology, all the other 
ologies you want to have, mathematics and everything else. So as Christians, we have a coherence view of reality. We also have a correspondence theory of reality. Because God has created the heavens and the earth is coherent, and we seek to bring our minds in correspondence with the mind of God. So as Christians, our view of truth, so that's the thing that's kind of beautiful. Uh, or one thing that's kind of crazy also. I went off to college 21 years ago. 21 years ago when I went to college, we Christians were stupid for believing in uh, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We all know dead men don't rise. Now, nowadays, we're kind of considered foolish or stupid or ignorant or intolerant because we believe in truth. Nowadays, man, how bigoted must those Christians believe and believe that their views are true? We know all things are relative. We know there's not any truth in the universe. After all, you know, we're, the very nature of being open-minded, we have to be open to the idea that all of our ideas change tomorrow. That's what it means to be open-minded. And you closed-minded Christians come along and say, no, there is a God. God's created the universe. He's revealed himself and we're accountable. Notice how I didn't say any of this, but you said this all. I mean, you're projecting what you perceive well, to be I'm your on problems onto me. I'm on a college campus every day. Well, obviously not to learn anything. Well, I'd venture to say a guy who's rejected logic, it's kind of hard to have a conversation. I haven't rejected logic. And All so I said is said, that it doesn't play see, into the issue we were discussing. Realize what he's saying. Again, he wants to use logic. Either, either I'm projecting or I'm not projecting. See, why bring logic into it? It's not, let's not bring logic Why do you into keep uh, dro dropping everything into this dichotomy of either it's this or that? Well, I mean, students, I'm not here to be logical today. Logic means this or that. If stop means go, lo and behold, our conversation's over. If A can be non A in the same way at the same time, our conversation's over. If all things are collapsed into one, Obviously, all the conversation ends. But when I came to you to so discuss either, a either scientific say, issue, you in, you instead obfuscated but, but it by bringing philosophy into it. Now, when I came to you, why a dichotomy? You're, you're just not clear in your thinking. And so I'm out, again, like I said, it's a UC Well, you system. sound like a really clearly thought out I'm, uh, person, I'm you know, for, uh, just shouting uh, into the higher, air and stuff. A higher bar, UC system today. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm holding you guys higher than the Cal States yesterday. What? puts you in a position to hold us to any standard, what makes you in any position to be our professor to hold us to anything? Well, at the end of the day, hopefully, see, at the end of the day, our uh, qualifications aren't predicated upon, uh, well, I'm a professor, I'm going to grade your papers. See, if you're really a person of truth, the reality is I can show up here and debate it's kind of like if, uh, you know, if you challenge Barack Obama on something, and someone just said, oh, who are you to question him? You know, he's the president. Why would you ever question him? But you place so yourself on this nature, pedestal of truth. Who put you on there other than yourself? Well, who put me on there? Well, the question is, do you think there is a, there, is there truth? Depends how you define it. Well, define it any way you want. Is there truth? Well, See, now, who wants to play semantic word games? Depends how you want to define it. A minute ago, his complaint was, you're just playing word games. Well, believe well, it or true? not, believe it or not, but the philosophy department here, every philosopher here is going to argue over what truth is. All right, so I'm asking so, you. So, I mean, you seem, you seem to think you know better, so why don't you go ahead well, and educate well, us all? Well, realize this. See, if I'm going to show up and play a truth game with you, debate truth with you, I'm not interested in debating truth with a relativist. What makes you think I'm a relativist? Well, again, I didn't say you were. I asked you to define truth, and you said, well, depends on what you mean by that word. And so that's what I'm asking. I'm asking you point blank, and if you answer the question, we can continue the conversation. If not, I'll move on. Because it's clear you're not really interested in uh, having a discussion on these things in conversation. So what's your definition of truth? Truth doesn't really come into the whole scientific enterprise, which is what I deal with. What I deal with is uh, whether the evidence corresponds to our models. Uh, but but even, even realize that truth doesn't come into play. So if I'm going to come out here and have a debate with some guy, then he's going to turn around and say, well, truth doesn't really come into play with my models. Truth is too simplistic a word to be used. Well, you say it's too simplistic of a word, but I also say models is too simplistic of a word. Again, you're now you're just playing word games. Again, if you're if, projecting if now, if you want to, if you want to have an intelligent debate, if you also want to ramble semantics out here, that's why I asked you point blank. Well, in order to have an intelligent and conversation, whole, you have to have at least posture, two intelligent people. Your whole We're lacking very, here, buddy. On the very basics is what is truth, and you can't even answer a simple question: what is truth? It's but not a simple question. Philosophers have been debating over what it is for well, that's centuries. What, that's what I'm trying to get at. Either we know what truth is or we don't. 
And if people are just shuffling papers around and saying, well, this might be true, that might not be true, this might be true, that might be true, and then you say, well, here's my model, so I'm going to work with this and have a pragmatic theory of truth, you still have a theory of truth, it's just a pragmatic theory of truth. And you're begging the question at the outset of what you want to accomplish. And there, For example, if my uh, model says, what's the best way to get rid of people I don't like? <laughs> My model tells me the most efficient way to do that might be a gas chamber, might be a gun, probably not be headings, but maybe I get a lot of joy out of it. So my model tells you about that. So when you just say my model tells me, you're not telling me anything about the nature of reality, you're telling me about your desires. I'm not telling you about my desires, I'm just telling you. But you said my model. Okay, and so what I'm saying but is, my well, desires my don't come into it, all that sure, comes into sure it. comes into it. Because if you say, for example, if you're desiring to travel, if you're desiring to travel and you're sitting there, Yo, you're you lowering questions. your voice like you're, you're you really giving me an about, earache well, right what now. What is the best way to get from A to B? Is it a skateboard? Is it a bike? Is it a car? Is it a plane? Your desires come into play. We can experiment so and we can and find say, out. My desires don't come into play. It's completely foolish. For example, a guy like yourself, you, you look at porn? Well, uh, sure. Sure. See, a guy like you who looks at porn, you, you kind of go, what's the best way for a guy like this to get his porn? Is it to go down to the seedy part of town and go into the store? Is it to hop on his Google and Google it up? For a guy like this, he probably, he probably doesn't want to pay for it, so he Googles it up. See, hopefully we can be mature about it. For a guy like this, he probably, he probably doesn't want to pay for it, so he Googles it up. So we're so, gonna, so, so this is fun. the level of the conversation we're going to get well, to now? Tell me, when was the last time you masturbated? I don't. You don't? I do not. You never masturbated in your life? I never said I never did that in my life. Okay. I said I don't. When was the last time you masturbated? That's the question. No, 21 years. 21 years? Yeah. Damn, dude. No wonder you're so frustrated. <laughs> well, well, see, when you're a slave to your passions, but again, see, all it deals with, well, what's our model? What's our model? What's our model? And then to say my desires have nothing to do with it is completely fallacious. Your desires come into play full tilt. Well, end of the day, dude, I think I see the problem. You need to get laid. I'll see you later. Yeah.